Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on corporate sales, the fourth book in the SM Bach series. A guide to the SM Sales and Marketing Body of Knowledge, or SM Bach Guide, also referred to as the SM Study Guide, is a series of books that provides guidelines for the sales and marketing of products and services. It offers a comprehensive framework that can be used to effectively manage sales and marketing efforts in any organization. The objective of the SM Study Guide is to provide a practical and process-oriented approach to sales and marketing that emphasizes how various elements of sales and marketing can be integrated to develop a comprehensive and effective organizational sales and marketing plan. The concepts in the SM Study Guide can be applied effectively to any company in any industry, from small companies with only a few employees to large, complex organizations with numerous business units, multiple product lines, and thousands of employees across many countries. The term product in the SM Study Guide may refer to either a product or a service of a company. This introduction chapter includes definitions of key terms, the purpose and framework of the SM Study Guide, the SM Study Certification Schema, the evolution of sales and marketing, an overview of the aspects of sales and marketing discussed throughout the SM Study Guide, and a general overview of the contents of this first book on marketing strategy. This chapter also briefly discusses corporate strategy and its relationships to sales and marketing. This chapter is divided into the following sections. How to use the SM Study Guide. Why use the SM Study Guide. A brief history of corporate sales. Corporate strategy and its relationship to sales and marketing. Aspects of sales and marketing. Levels of sales and marketing strategy. Marketing strategy overview. Corporate sales overview. We'll learn about all of these in detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. Let's discuss how to use the SM Study Guide. SM Study Guide can be used as a reference and knowledge guide by experienced sales and marketing practitioners, as well as by persons with little prior knowledge or experience in sales and marketing roles. Because the SM Study Guide offers a comprehensive sales and marketing framework, many will find value in using this resource to guide decision-making and planning across all facets of sales and marketing. However, the contents of the guide are organized to enable quick and easy reference for individuals who may be interested in or studying only one or two specific facets of sales and marketing. Similarly, the SM Study Guide provides a valuable tool for individuals already in distinct sales or marketing roles, as its design enables such individuals to focus on the specific aspects that are most relevant to such roles. Process-oriented approach with defined inputs, tools, and outputs. In order to facilitate the best application of the SM Study Guide framework, the SM Study Guide defines a process-oriented approach to sales and marketing, which provides specific guidance to sales and marketing professionals about how to most effectively and efficiently manage their sales and marketing activities. The SM Study Guide defines sales and marketing in terms of processes that comprise a series of actions that leads to a particular result. Each process requires specific inputs and then uses tools to create specific outputs. To cater to the needs of a diverse audience with varying levels of expertise in sales and marketing, the SM Study Guide has differentiated highly recommended inputs, tools, and outputs from recommended but optional ones. Inputs, tools, and outputs denoted by asterisks are highly recommended, while others with no asterisks are recommended but optional. It is suggested that those individuals being introduced to sales and marketing focus primarily on the highly recommended inputs, tools, and outputs for each process, while more experienced practitioners should thoroughly understand all of the relevant inputs, tools, and outputs for each process. Using the SM Study Guide with the SM Study website and the ViaMedU mobile app, the SM Study website and the ViaMedU mobile app provide additional resources to help individuals better understand and apply the sales and marketing framework defined in the SM Study Guide. The website and app include the following. A certification schema that helps students study marketing subjects in a structured manner get tested on relevant concepts through proctored certification exams and gain relevant certifications that demonstrate their knowledge and experience in different areas of sales and marketing. High-quality videos with relevant and interesting examples that help individuals gain a thorough understanding of specific concepts. Case studies that illustrate how the SM Study Guide framework can be used in real-life scenarios. Additional resources for students to obtain expert training through physical classrooms, virtual instructor-led sessions, and high-quality online courses. A glossary of terms, flashcards, study guides, and more. That's all for now. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this module, we'll list the certification schema for SM Study certifications. The certifications related to the SM Study Guide are managed by smstudy.com. The certification schema is outlined in this figure. Here is a brief description of each level of certification. Let's take a look. Associate Level Certifications 
The introduction modules are available at no charge to interested individuals. All aspects of sales and marketing have an applicable associate level certification, such as SM Study Certified Marketing Strategy Associate. The certification exams are free and not proctored, and candidates have one hour to complete each exam. The prerequisite is an understanding of the highly recommended inputs, tools, and outputs for each process relevant to the particular aspect of sales and marketing. There is no work experience requirement and no mandatory educational hours in addition to the recommended study. Professional level certifications. All aspects of sales and marketing have an applicable professional level certification, such as SM Study Certified Marketing Strategy Professional. The certification exams are proctored, and candidates have two hours to complete each exam. The prerequisite is a study of the relevant SM Study Guidebook with more emphasis on the highly recommended inputs, tools, and outputs for each process relevant to the particular marketing aspect. There is no work experience requirement and no mandatory educational hours in addition to the recommended study. Individuals who pass the certification exams for three or more professional modules are awarded an additional certification called SM Study Certified Sales and Marketing Professional. Specialist Level Certifications all aspects of sales and marketing have an associated specialist level certification, such as SM Study Certified Marketing Strategy Specialist. The certification exams are proctored, and candidates have three hours to complete each exam. The prerequisites are a study of all of the relevant inputs, tools, and outputs for each process, three years of related work experience, and 20 mandatory educational hours. Individuals who pass the certification exams for three or more specialist modules are awarded an additional certification called SM Study Certified Sales and Marketing Specialist. Expert Level Certifications All aspects of sales and marketing have an associated expert level certification, such as SM Study Certified Marketing Strategy Expert. The certification exams are proctored and candidates have four hours to complete each exam. The prerequisites are attaining a specialist level certification for that specific aspect, a study of all of the relevant inputs, tools, and outputs for each process, five years of related work experience, 40 mandatory educational hours, and recommendations from two peers and a manager. Individuals who pass the certification exams for three or more expert modules are awarded an additional certification called SM Study Certified Sales and Marketing Expert. Other than the certifications mentioned above, SM Study offers additional certifications in fields related to sales and marketing, such as affiliate marketing, email marketing, search engine optimization, search marketing, social media, and web analytics. Information about these certifications is available on the smstudy.com website. With that, we'll wrap up this video. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this module, we'll take a look at some of the key benefits of using the SM Study Guide. Number one, consolidated expertise. The SM Study Guide was developed by VMEDU Inc., a global certification course provider that has educated over 400,000 students worldwide and more than 3,500 companies. It provides practical, industry-proven best practices rather than purely theoretical advice. Number two, process-oriented approach. The SM Study Guide explains sales and marketing concepts through a practical process-oriented approach. This helps sales and marketing professionals understand the specific processes they should follow to be effective in their sales and marketing roles. Each process has associated inputs, tools, and outputs that are recommended for use. Highly recommended inputs, tools, and outputs are denoted with an asterisk beside the concept in each process box and when each process is discussed throughout that section. Number three, applicable to all industries. The many authors, advisors, and reviewers of the SM Study Guide have worked in numerous sales and marketing areas and geographic regions across a variety of industries. Therefore, the insights provided make this body of knowledge industry independent. Number four, applicable to companies of all sizes. The SM Study Guide has been written to meet the needs of all companies regardless of size. Small startup companies with fewer than 10 employees or large organizations with several thousand employees and multiple product lines and business units can equally benefit from the information in this guide. Additionally, the content provided in the SM Study Guide is highly relevant for both for-profit and non-profit organizations. Number five, comprehensiveness. The SM Study Guide is organized into six sales and marketing aspects, marketing strategy, MS, marketing research, MR, digital marketing, DM, corporate sales, CS, Branding and Advertising, BA, and Retail Marketing, RM. Each aspect is detailed in a separate book. Altogether, the series provides a comprehensive and complete understanding of sales and marketing. 
The concepts covered in the SM Study Guide are further reinforced through videos and case studies available at smstudy.com. Number six, applicable to beginners and experts. The SM Study Guide presents recommended concepts that beginners should know and also highlights advanced concepts for individuals who have more experience and who are on their way to becoming experts in their field. Readers can decide which of the six sales and marketing aspects are more relevant to them and select from the available books accordingly. Number seven, alignment with job roles. The aspects included in the SM Study Guide are organized to align with the most common or typical job roles or career fields of sales and marketing. And number eight, continuous improvement. Concepts related to sales and marketing continue to evolve. Therefore, the SM Study Guide will be continuously reviewed and updated to ensure that it remains relevant. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll discuss a brief history of corporate sales. Corporate sales has evolved concurrently with sales and marketing. It is important to present a high-level overview of the history of sales and marketing in order to understand and appreciate the changes that have taken place over time. All of the models described below are relevant to business-to-business -to -business or B2B sales as well and continue to be used today. Barter System More than a thousand years ago, when coins and other forms of money were not yet popular, the typical and most common way people procured their products or services was through the barter system the direct exchange of goods or services without the use of money. For example, a farmer might exchange some of his harvest with a carpenter for some wooden furniture. Sales and marketing with the barter system is dependent on having access to the appropriate persons with whom things can be exchanged for mutual value to both parties. Barter continues to be used today. Some people and countries still exchange some goods and services without the use of money. The barter system may replace money in times of monetary crisis, when the usual exchange currency is unavailable or when currency is unstable, such as due to high inflation. What examples of barter system can you think of? A tradesperson, such as a carpenter or electrician, operating his or her own business might provide services free of charge to his or her accountant in exchange for professional accounting services. We've reached the end of another module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll discuss traditional and seller's marketplace. 500 to 1,000 years ago, coins and other forms of money started becoming popular as a medium of exchange between people. This led to the creation of the traditional marketplace, where producers, such as farmers, craftsmen, and carpenters, create products, stay in the shop with their wares, and shout out to a crowd of potential customers in the marketplace in order to promote and sell their products. Traditional marketplaces are usually small markets where price negotiations and other decisions related to sales are made quickly, often by one or two persons. There may be significant flexibility regarding discounts and additional product benefits. The focus is more on short-term gains and less on long-term transactions and relationships. There is a negligible amount of branding and advertising. Instead, the objective is to sell what has already been produced. What example of traditional and seller's marketplace can you think of? The traditional marketplace is still in use today, in some cases under unique labels such as the bazaars of Turkey, the hots of India, the floating markets in Thailand, the wet markets in Hong Kong, the flea markets in Germany, the souks of the Middle East, the farmer's market in the U.S., and the tianguis of Mexico. Seller's Marketplace The Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th centuries marked a shift to mass production in factories. During this time, transportation infrastructure improved significantly with inventions such as the steam engine and more efficient ships. The banking system was further developed and the exchange of money became easier. Communication was also substantially improved through the development of the postal system and the use of telegraphs. Furthermore, goods were produced more efficiently and economically in factories and could be sold to a wider market. This created the seller's marketplace. The main objective of the seller's marketplace is to establish a supply chain to procure products and then establish a distribution channel to sell the products to a wide variety of customers, often referred to as mass marketing. The practice of using channel partners to sell products was established during this period. Emphasis on branding and advertising is minimal in a seller's marketplace. What are some examples of a seller's marketplace? The seller's marketplace continues to be used today in some countries, where agricultural produce is often procured by the government. The government, in turn, manages the distribution of the produce to the different markets. The seller's marketplace is also prevalent in industries where the government controls the competition of private companies, for example, the distribution of petroleum products, or licenses that allow only a select few companies to manufacture a particular product in the country. 
If a natural disaster or unfavorable weather conditions cause widespread crop failure in a particular region, a seller who has stores of that particular crop in that location could capitalize on a seller's marketplace because there would be more buyers than available product. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss conventional mass media marketing. In the 20th century, as the number of manufacturers or industries for specific products grew, consumers had the option to buy from multiple manufacturers. Unlike a seller's marketplace where sellers have the advantage over customers, mass media marketing features multiple manufacturers, thus shifting the balance of power in favor of consumers. Manufacturers created differentiated perceptions for their products by developing brands or names for their specific products or services with a specific message or positioning. They also began advertising their products or brands for a wider reach. Primary channels used for mass media marketing are print advertising, like newspapers, magazines, inserts, or run of paper, mass mailers, such as flyers, postcards, television, including network, cable, or syndication, radio, including national, local, satellite, or podcast, and outdoor advertising, such as billboards, bus shelters, and stadiums. The viable channels for conventional mass media marketing may be restricted in some instances. Let's say some channels may be cost prohibitive or simply unavailable in some markets. However, a company can reach a wide segment of consumers using one or more channels effectively. For example, a business may choose to use only newspaper advertising and mass mailers to advertise the launch of a new business. It is also important to note that identifying the revenue generating from mass media marketing spent can help assess the success or failure of specific mass media marketing campaigns. The objective of conventional mass media marketing is for organizations to create strong brands and differentiated brand perceptions so that consumers will desire and purchase their products rather than those available from competitors. Thus, mass media marketing usually uses cumulative repetition over time to influence consumer attitudes and purchase actions. Mass media marketing also involves creating distribution channels and appropriate pricing and positioning strategies to ensure that desirable products are available to customers at specific price points. With respect to corporate sales, companies started using basic customer relationship management or CRM systems to store customer data and improve communication with customers. In recent years, some of these companies have decreased their budgets for conventional mass media marketing and have in turn increased allocations towards fragmented new age marketing and or innovative internet enabled business models. One of the key drivers for this change is the fact that consumers generally spend significantly more time online, such as using computers, tablets, and cell phones than they used to, so targeting them through conventional mass media marketing would be suboptimal. What examples of conventional mass media marketing can you think of? Conventional mass media marketing continues to be used today, particularly by companies with established brands with relatively high marketing budgets and a broad target market. Companies such as PepsiCo, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble, Unilever, McDonald's, and Walmart continue to primarily use mass media marketing for marketing their products and brands. That's all for now. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss fragmented New Age marketing. In recent times, the media has become increasingly fragmented with several hundred television and radio channels, as well as a large variety of print media, including newspaper, magazines, and trade publications. Moreover, since the late 1990s, with the increasingly popularity of the internet, and more recently, smartphones, many options now exist for advertisers to reach a global audience using digital media marketing methods, such as cell phone apps, Google, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, QR codes, gamification, and proximity marketing. With all of these options, many marketers find it beneficial to use an integrated approach to marketing by leveraging the strengths of various types of media. Companies must evaluate all media in terms of who the target audience is and what media resonates with them best. In many cases, assumptions will need to be made and incorporated into the media testing framework. For example, for each planning period, a company might allocate a certain amount of its marketing budget to test new methods. Some characteristics of fragmented new age marketing are as follows. It is a fact that people now spend more time on the internet using smartphones, tablets, or computers than they spend through conventional mass media, such as television, radio, or newspapers. This is especially true for the 30-year-old and younger market segment. 
Since sales and marketing is most successful when it meets the demands of consumers, this change in consumer preference is significantly altering the sales and marketing landscape for established companies. Businesses are discovering that conventional mass media marketing has limited effectiveness, and some customer segments are not even reachable using these traditional media forms. Fragmented new age marketing generally supports new small brands with much smaller budgets targeted directly to customers in a global marketplace. This represents a significant distinction from conventional mass media marketing, where achieving a global reach for a small company may have been prohibitively expensive. While mass media marketing is less targeted and primarily focused on affecting emotional attitudes about the brand, new age marketing is data-driven and more focused on driving specific calls to action. Also, while mass media marketing typically involves interruption, that is, people watching a television program which is interrupted by an advertisement, new age marketing is about engagement, that is, offering relevant content that is of value to people. Unlike older media options where sales and marketing communications were primarily unidirectional, from producers to end consumers, communications have increasingly become multidirectional, from producers to consumers, consumers to producers, and consumers to consumers. For example, there are multiple rating websites available where customers can provide independent ratings of the company's products or services, and others, including the company itself, can respond or elaborate on these ratings. Although generally a benefit to both producers and consumers, this trend can make brand management challenging for companies if actual or potential customers perceive that a product does not reflect the brand message intended by marketing efforts. Due to the nature of new age marketing, consisting of multiple media forms and the ability to generate significant information, huge amounts of data, commonly referred to as big data, are now available to companies. The ability to process this data through proper marketing analytics and assimilate such data to generate valuable insights can become a significant differentiator for ensuring that companies engage in smart marketing, that is, to generate greater revenues with relatively small marketing budgets. What examples of fragmented new age marketing can you think of? Social media, such as Facebook, Google+, YouTube, and company websites allow small companies to showcase their products at a low cost or at times even for free. Companies can share engaging content, which can go viral, thus promoting their brand and reaching a global audience. Brands can also produce informative instructional content via blog posts, forums, and more. Similarly, online paid advertising such as Google AdWords, LinkedIn sponsored updates, and Facebook ads allows companies to market their products or services to the target audiences at smaller budgets compared to conventional mass media marketing. For many companies, online paid advertising is replacing conventional mass media marketing. It may be important to note that unlike mass media, which is a one-way broadcast from brand to consumer, new age marketing involves a two-way interaction between brand and consumer. For example, in the case of Google AdWords, the consumer clicks on an ad that takes him or her to the landing page of the brand's website. At that point, the brand will likely ask that the consumer do something. If the consumer accepts the call to action, the company provides additional information on the product itself. Thus, the transaction is usually a back-and-forth engagement between the company and its potential customers. With that, we'll end this session. Thank you for learning with us. Hi, welcome to our module on Innovative Internet-Enabled Business Models. The growing popularity of the internet, smartphones, and digital media provide opportunities for a company to not only use fragmented new age marketing effectively to promote existing products, but also to come up with innovative business models where product demo, customer acquisition, and order fulfillment can also take place online. Innovative business models may include the following. Online marketplaces. Several e-commerce companies have created global online marketplaces for selling books, consumer goods, and other products. In such business models, customer acquisition is usually initiated through the company's website. The company coordinates with its multiple suppliers to source products. Samples, demos, and product reviews are provided on the website. Customers make their purchases online, and items are shipped directly to customers. What example of online marketplaces can you think of? Book publishing and retail businesses, which historically gained much success using traditional business models, have been significantly affected by the advent of online marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, and Flipkart. Online services. Online services have significantly impacted many traditional product and service industries by transforming existing business models and creating new ways to conduct business. Here is an example of online services. Global positioning systems and online maps have made physical maps redundant. Online networking. The internet has made the world a smaller place. People can now have access to their networks at all times. These changes have significantly impacted the way in which people communicate with each other and, in turn, have created new possibilities for innovative business models. 
What are some examples of online networking? Social media channels such as LinkedIn, Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook, and Google Plus have significantly changed the way in which people communicate with each other. Business models using smartphones. Smartphones are internet-enabled cell phones that also allow people to have an ongoing connection to the internet. Since individuals usually carry their smartphones with them, mobile apps are becoming increasingly popular. Innovative business models based on the use of smartphones can disrupt several existing business models, more so in industries that rely on other forms of communications and networking. Let's look at an example of business models using smartphones. Several airlines and travel portals have mobile apps to facilitate the ability to book flight tickets using smartphones. These apps also enable partnerships in which customers can also reserve car rentals and make hotel accommodations when purchasing airline tickets. That's all for now. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this module, we'll discuss sales and marketing as a continuum. It is important for us to note that the fact that we are in the 21st century does not make all earlier avenues of sales and marketing obsolete. Some companies marketing consumer goods continue to spend a significant portion of their marketing budget on conventional mass media marketing. In some cases, a seller's marketplace continues to be the reality for certain commodities that have limited number of producers, or where the production is highly regulated by the government or controlled by monopolies or duopolies. Similarly, in some regions or countries, traditional marketplaces continue to flourish. Rather than viewing the changes as completely replacing the earlier practices, sales and marketing approaches should be viewed as a continuum where recent innovations can coexist with earlier practices. It is the responsibility of a company's sales and marketing teams to make the strategic decisions that will work best to achieve the desired outcomes, given the reality of the markets and particular consumer preferences. Sales and marketing students who read material on the subject often find it confusing because authors provide varied perspectives that may be difficult to assimilate and comprehend in the present day. Each author's perspective can also vary depending on when the material was written, where he or she was on the sales and marketing timeline, his or her individual or industry preferences and experiences, and other factors. Conversely, the concepts covered in the Sales and Marketing Body of Knowledge, the SM Study Guide, are not limited to the perspective of any particular author or industry. The SM Study Guide was developed by VMEDU Inc., a professional education provider which has educated over 400,000 students worldwide and more than 3,500 companies. The 50-plus authors, advisors, and reviewers of this book have worked in multiple marketing environments in geographic regions across an eclectic variety of industries. Thus, the insights provided in this book provide a comprehensive detail of the principles and concepts related to sales and marketing, and specifically to corporate sales. It also articulates an action-oriented process approach that can be used by sales and marketing practitioners to gain a better understanding of the subject, and then construct a comprehensive and effective corporate sales strategy that supports both the marketing objectives as set out in the marketing strategy and the business goals as established in the corporate strategy. With that, we'll wrap up this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this module, we'll study corporate strategy and its relationship to sales and marketing. Corporate strategy is the overall direction of the company, as defined by senior management, that takes into account consideration and assessment of the existing capabilities of the company and external opportunities and threats. Corporate strategy usually coincides with the immediate future fiscal period, or it could be developed with a longer-term view, such as a three-year plan. It is important to understand the overall corporate strategy and its relationship to all areas of the business in order to ensure that activities at all levels are aligned and aimed at achieving overall corporate goals. Corporate sales is one component of the overall marketing strategy, and the marketing strategy is established using direction provided by the overall corporate strategy of the company. Without a clear understanding of where the company plans to be in the near and far future, it is difficult for the corporate sales efforts to be crafted to contribute to the sales and marketing objectives or the overall goals of the business. Corporate strategy is a combination of the following. 1. Senior management direction and insights. This is provided by senior management based on their experience and insights related to the business. 2. Corporate product strategy. This defines the products or services the company offers and the research and development or R&D efforts required to create them. 3. Corporate marketing strategy. This defines how the company will target, position, market, and sell the planned products and defines metrics, targets, and budgets for all marketing activities. 4. Corporate Operations Strategy This defines how the company will manage operational activities, manufacture its products or provide services, and provide the corresponding customer support and warranty. 5. Corporate Finance Strategy 
This defines how the company will manage its finances, attain funding, and financially sustain its operations. The finance strategy should include forecasts and projections, and summarize costs, income, and investments. Six. Corporate human resource strategy. This maps the human resource capabilities within the company and considers talent management and acquisition needs to sustain growth. The diagram below shows the components of corporate strategy. That's all for now. Thank you for learning with us. Hello, and welcome to this module in which we'll continue our discussion on corporate strategy and its relationship to sales and marketing. Typically, companies have existing documentation regarding their corporate product strategy, corporate marketing strategy, corporate operations strategy, corporate finance strategy, and corporate human resource strategy. These must be considered in an integrated manner to define a coherent corporate strategy. The level and complexity of documentation for these strategies may vary depending on the size of the company and the breadth of its product portfolio and geographic reach. If formal documentation of these strategies is not available, such as with a startup company, The teams involved in strategic planning should consider the various strategies using the SM Study Guide framework and decide on an overall corporate strategy, which can then become a benchmark to execute future plans. Finalizing the company's corporate strategy can be a time-consuming and rigorous exercise that requires inputs from multiple stakeholders, particularly senior management. It is advisable to execute strategic planning exercises at appropriate and specific time intervals. Such as once or twice a year, and then finalize a corporate strategy on which senior management and the heads of strategy team agree. Following this process will help to ensure that the leadership team has coherently defined goals and strategies that align with the overall strategic goals of the organization. Corporate strategy can, in turn, be further divided into lower-level strategies depending on the complexity of the organization. For example, the corporate strategy for an entire company can be divided into strategies for each business unit or geographic region. Such as country, state, or city, and then subdivided further into a product or brand strategy for each product or brand in a business unit or geographic region. The product or brand strategy is the lowest level in this hierarchy. The figure below illustrates the relationship between corporate strategy, business unit geographic strategy, and product brand strategy. While each of the various strategies established in an organization has its own goals and expectations, it is important to note that all activities must align in order to ensure that teams are focused on achieving targets that will contribute to the overall business goals. For corporate sales, which is the focus of this book, specific targets are set that will enable the team to measure its own success. However, when goals are aligned across brands, functional areas, and business units, achieving corporate sales goals also contributes to the attainment of the overall marketing objectives and ultimately assists the business in the successful execution of the corporate strategy and, therefore, the achievement of business goals. That's all for now. Thank you for learning with us. Hello, and welcome to this module on aspects of sales and marketing. The SM Study Guide describes six aspects of sales and marketing as follows: one, marketing strategy; two, marketing research; three, digital marketing; four, corporate sales; five, branding and advertising; and six, retail marketing. Since the SM Study Guide is geared towards sales and marketing professionals or those who desire to work in this field, the six aspects are based on the six most common and often distinct career fields related to sales and marketing. This figure illustrates six aspects of sales and marketing and how they interact with each other. The two marketing aspects that are shown in the dotted lines at the top of this figure, which are marketing strategy and marketing research, are referred to as essential marketing aspects. Both of these aspects are mandatory and should be used to define, measure, and provide direction for the overall marketing efforts of a company. The four remaining aspects, which are digital marketing, corporate sales, branding and advertising, and retail marketing, are referred to as optional marketing aspects because one or more of them could be used by a company to reach its marketing goals, and in some instances, not all are applicable. For example, a small company creating phone apps or online games may decide to solely use digital marketing. Another company manufacturing heavy equipment may use only corporate sales, and a large consumer goods company or global fashion chain may decide to use all four optional marketing aspects to reach its marketing goals. Marketing strategy describes how the aspect of marketing strategy aligns with a company's overall corporate strategy and acts as a unifying framework to define and analyze the other aspects of sales and marketing. It also supports the alignment of all marketing resources among all aspects. Marketing strategy includes determining internal organizational strengths and weaknesses, as well as external opportunities and threats. Identifying and segregating prospective buyers into market segments based on common needs. 
defining competitive positioning to satisfy specific customer needs, creating pricing and distribution strategies, and defining the metrics, objectives, and corresponding budgets for implementation, evaluation, and improvement of all marketing activities. Marketing research explains the concepts of marketing research and provides a framework to conduct marketing research and to analyze sales and marketing data. It also demonstrates how marketing research findings can help the marketing team conceptualize and finalize product features and other components of a company's marketing strategy. In addition, marketing research discusses assessment tools that can be used to measure factors that can help drive better corporate decision making and, in turn, more decisive marketing actions. Marketing research can be conducted for any other aspect of sales and marketing. It is commonly used to test multiple marketing hypotheses in order to better understand consumer behavior, finalize product features, define metrics for measuring marketing efforts, and track and improve marketing activities. Digital marketing includes all marketing activities that use electronic devices connected to the Internet to engage with customers, such as computers, tablets, and smartphones. These include activities related to creating and managing effective websites and mobile apps as well as promoting a company's products and brand through various online channels that help meet marketing objectives. Some of the tools pertaining to digital marketing include search engine optimization, search engine marketing, mobile device marketing, social media marketing, and email marketing. This aspect also demonstrates how an effective marketing strategy can be a force multiplier for the other sales and marketing aspects. Corporate sales, which is the focus of this book, outlines the best practices and processes to be followed for effective business-to-business -business or B2B sales. It provides guidance on activities related to building strong business relationships, successfully working with other businesses to help them see the value in the company's products and services, understanding procurement management, conducting effective negotiations with other organizations, and ensuring leads generation, qualification, follow-up, and other related activities. It also emphasizes how corporate sales should interface with the other sales and marketing aspects. Branding and advertising includes concepts of product branding, consumer behavior, marketing communication, and public relations. Branding is the process of creating a distinct image of a product or range of products in the customer's mind. This image communicates the promise of value the customer will receive from the product or products. Branding should remain consistent across all channels of communication with the customer. Advertising is defined in the SM Study Guide as any paid form of non-personal communications to existing or potential customers that promote the company's products through all types of media, such as radio, television, and print. Online advertising is discussed in the book on digital marketing. Retail marketing presents concepts of all marketing activities related to persuading the end customer to purchase a company's products at a physical retail outlet or store and effectively managing the supply chain and distribution channels to improve the reach and sales for a company's products. This aspect also discusses how retail marketing interfaces with the other sales and marketing aspects. And with that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this module, we'll discuss the levels of the sales and marketing strategy. The corporate marketing strategy, which is a component of the overall corporate strategy, is further divided into various business unit or geographic strategies, which, in turn, is further divided into particular product or brand strategies for each product or brand. Figure 1-6 illustrates the relationship between corporate marketing strategy, business unit geographic marketing strategy, and product brand marketing strategy. The corporate marketing strategy is defined at a corporate level. It defines the overall marketing goals for the company. These general marketing goals drive more specific marketing strategies for each of the company's business units or geographies. Each business unit or geography in turn defines its own goals, which are relevant inputs for each area's particular product or brand marketing strategies. Each product or brand marketing strategy, also referred to as marketing strategy in the SM study guide, defines sales and marketing objectives for each product or brand, which drives specific tactics that align with and often rely on other marketing aspects. The marketing activities across all aspects of marketing are designed with the marketing objectives in mind. Within the strategy for each aspect, including corporate sales, which is the focus of this book, various activities are designed to meet specific targets that the team establishes will provide a measure of success and enable the team to contribute to the overall marketing objectives and, ultimately, to the business goals. What example can you think of for this concept? A global automobile company. Corporate level. A global automobile company specializing in manufacturing luxury automobiles has a corporate goal to grow the revenue of the company by 8% in the upcoming year by launching new models of cars in its existing locations and entering new market segments. 
Business Unit Geographic Level. The automobile company has been organized into multiple business units based on geographies where it conducts business. Each business unit has business unit goals that contribute to the company's overall corporate goals. The business unit goals for the next year are 5% growth in revenue in the United States, 10% growth in China, 4% growth in the United Kingdom, 12% growth in India, and 6% growth in Germany. Product Brand Level To meet the 10% revenue growth target in China, the marketing team in China plans strategies for the three existing brands in the market, Ceres, Palace, and Vesta, and also plans to launch a new brand, Juno. Each brand targets a different customer segment. Ceres is an entry-level sedan, targeted at working professionals who aspire to have a luxury car. Palace is a minivan, primarily targeted at families with children. Vesta is a four-wheel drive sport utility vehicle for individuals who want both on- and off-road capability and to still be able to go on long drives. The new brand, Juno, is a convertible that the Chinese business unit plans to target at young persons who want a stylish and fun car. Each brand team creates a marketing strategy for its brand. When creating the marketing strategy, the team considers the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the brand, defines the market and identifies the different market segments, identifies the brand's competition, finalizes the target market segment for the brand, analyzes the target market to create a differentiated positioning for the brand, and then finalizes the pricing and distribution strategies. Each team then determines the appropriate metrics and objectives that will help reach the team's growth target and a budget is allocated to each marketing aspect. Juno's key metric is sales, and its main objective is to sell 25,000 cars in the Chinese market the year after the vehicle is released. The marketing strategy team for Juno decides to use digital marketing, branding and advertising, and retail marketing to reach out to its target market segment. Juno's product strategy team sets a budget of $1 million for digital marketing to sell 3,000 cars, $10 million for branding and advertising to sell 10,000 cars, and $15 million for retail marketing to sell 12,000 cars. Marketing Aspect Level The metrics, objectives, and budgets allocated to each of the marketing aspects become inputs for those aspects. For example, the digital marketing team may decide to create a high-quality website with their budget of $1 million with an objective of selling 3,000 cars. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hi! In this module, we'll focus on product or brand level marketing strategy. Although corporate marketing strategy is discussed briefly here and in detail in Appendix A of the Marketing Strategy book, subsequent chapters of this book primarily discuss corporate sales as a contributor to the marketing strategy at the product or brand level. The objective of this approach is to focus on learning these concepts and developing strategies at the most granular level. The concepts, however, can be extrapolated and the knowledge applied to develop strategies at higher levels, such as business unit or geographic or corporate levels. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello. In this video, we'll talk about the marketing strategy overview. All successful products or brands need well-planned marketing strategies in place to ensure that they satisfy the goals set by the corresponding business unit or geographic location and, in turn, the overall corporate marketing strategy. Marketing strategy is, therefore, one of the most crucial aspects of sales and marketing. It defines a product or brand's unique value proposition, target markets, and the specific strategies to be used to connect with defined audiences. It also specifies the pricing and distribution strategies for product or brand, and outlines the specific metrics, objectives, and budgets for all of its marketing activities. Among the outputs of the marketing strategy are the specific aspects that will be used to achieve the marketing objectives for a product or brand. Corporate sales is a key aspect for companies involved in B2B sales to achieve its overall marketing objectives. It is important to note, however, that corporate sales is just one element of a variety of aspects of marketing that companies use to grow their business and achieve their corporate goals. For an overview of marketing strategy and its various components, see Appendix A.1. For a comprehensive understanding of how to build and execute a marketing strategy that aligns all aspects of marketing toward achieving both the marketing objectives and the business goals, consult the Marketing Strategy book of the SM Study Guide series. Thank you for learning with us. Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at the overview of corporate sales. Corporate sales outlines the best practices and processes to be followed for effective business-to-business -business or B2B sales. It provides guidance on activities related to building strong business relationships, successfully working with other businesses to help them see the value in the company's products or services, conducting effective negotiations with other organizations, and ensuring leads generation, qualification, follow-up, and other related activities. Corporate sales is an important aspect for companies involved in B2B sales. 
It outlines the processes that the company needs to follow for generating B2B sales as well as retaining customers through good account management practices. It starts with understanding the company's sales value proposition, followed by creating a suitable sales channel network. Before reaching out to the target segment, the company also needs to ensure that it is ready for the sales process by planning sales governance, setting sales targets, creating appropriate marketing assets, and creating compensation structures. In addition, the company also needs to ensure that the corporate sales team is well trained with respect to process and product knowledge before getting in touch with potential customers. The sales process includes prospecting for potential customers, followed by conversion that leads to customer acquisition. Account management is aimed at supporting and satisfying customer needs to ensure high levels of customer satisfaction and customer retention. Figure 1-7 provides an overview of the important processes and outputs related to marketing strategy. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you. Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll discuss sales value proposition and determine corporate sales channels. This chapter reviews the processes required to understand and create the sales value proposition and establish the corporate sales channel network. In the first process, the value of a product or service to customers to facilitate corporate sales is defined. The sales value proposition states positive measurable outcomes and clearly communicates how the company's products or services can help meet customer needs and achieve the corporate sales outcomes. The sales value proposition is the foundation upon which other organizational capabilities for corporate sales are built. In the second process, the channel network that will ensure effective customer reach is established. This figure provides an overview of the processes discussed in Chapter 2. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us. Hello, and welcome to this module on Prepare Organization for Sales. The third chapter of this book reviews the processes required to prepare an organization for sales. It describes how to establish and manage a sales process that is aligned to corporate, finance, and human resource strategies, and that will meet forecasted sales targets. The sales structure established will depend to a great degree on the nature of the business, the industry, the size of the organization, and its geographic footprint. An effective sales organization is supported by marketing assets and includes a sales incentive structure. The sales organization and governance must be designed to optimally support sales targets and create visibility into the sales team's performance to allow for adjustments and course corrections as necessary to ensure that the business meets its sales revenue objectives. Since sales targets are directly linked to all sales and marketing and financial objectives, they are essential components in the achievement of the company's overall objectives. This figure provides an overview of the processes discussed in Chapter 3, Prepare Organization for Sales. With that, we'll end this module. Thank you for learning with us.